The breaking me was one of the worst forms of punishment in history. It was both a very spectacular and exemplary form of capital punishment because it was carried out publicly, usually attracted many spectators, and was intended to inflict as much pain for as long as possible. The breaking wheel is often referred to as Catherine wheel, because according to legend, St. Catherine of Alexandria was sentenced to be executed by the wheel when she refused to renounce her Christian belief. However, when she touched the wheel, it shattered magically. The procedure of this punishment varied heavily, depending on region, time and verdict. According to a medieval law book, it was reserved for the worst crimes – murder, robbing a church, treason or arson. The punishment was usually carried out in two distinct steps. The primary goal of the first step was not death, but torture. The victim was taken to a scaffold and tied to the floor, more often than not naked, which was an additional humiliation. Then, the executioner picked up the wheel, typically a large wooden wheel with spokes, reinforced with a sharp iron rim and sometimes even with additional spikes or blades. Most commonly, the executioner began his work at the legs. He first dropped the wheel on the victim's shin bones and then worked his way up to the arms. Usually, the verdict prescribed the number of blows and even the rhythm they should be executed in. It all depended on the severity of the crime committed. The joints of the victim were often placed on sharp-edged blocks of wood to increase the effect of each blow. As always, the engineers of cruelty did their job pretty well and designed devices on which the condemned could be fastened. At the end of the first step, the victim's extremities were shattered to pieces. The victim was in agonizing pain or had even already passed out. If conducted this way, the punishment was dealt bottom up. There were, however, some instances in which the procedure was reversed, ending in a finishing stroke at the neck or chest. Less severe crime were punished top-down, that is, the first blow was intended to kill the man, while the breaking of the rest of the body was just for exemplary purposes. In most cases, however, the ordeal went into the second part. Here, the victim was tied to another wheel and braided into its spokes. This would have been impossible with an intact body, but because the bones were broken, the arms and legs could be better deformed. When the victim was mounted, the wheel was attached to a post to display the gruesome work of art. At this point, the torture ended for most, and the executioner strangled or beheaded the victim. But not all had this luck. In certain cases, the wheel was hung over a fire or thrown directly into a fire. But the victim suffered the longest if he was simply left hanging from the wheel until he died of his own accord. According to various medieval accounts, there were cases in which the victim survived for several hours or even days. The historian Rosemary Horrocks mentions the example of a man who in 1348 lasted for four days and four nights before taking his last breath. In all this cruelty, there was one glimmer of hope for the condemned man. If something went wrong, for example, the wheel fell off the post or broke, this was interpreted as God intervening. Thus the punishment ended immediately and the convict was set free. But if God did not intervene, the lifeless body was left hanging on the wheel even after the execution. There it slowly decomposed and was eaten by wild animals. This is probably one of the reasons why archaeological finds of victims of the breaking wheel are relatively rare. In contrast to the numerous written sources, only two skeletons have been found to date, but the punishment went far beyond physical torture and did not even end with death. Because according to medieval beliefs, because of the mutilation of the body and the failure to bury it, the soul was denied resurrection and eternal peace. The breaking wheel was thus all the more horrific because it was believed to affect the afterlife as well. While the Middle Ages were the heyday of the breaking wheel, the punishment made a comeback in the 18th century, especially in Germany and France. The last known case in which someone was executed by the wheel took place in Prussia in 1841. Rudolf Künafel, a robber and murderer, was executed by the wheel for killing the Bishop of Warmia. 